Monday and uh, and welcome to the first of uh, what hopefully will be a number of initiatives uh, of Money Monday and we're going to hear we're going to share with you a whole lot of tools tactics but on Monday it's all going to be about strategy and when I say strategy it's all going to be about foundations of finance we're going to talk about the philosophy we're going to talk about the strategy we're going to talk about the theory but not just that we're going to give you the overall, like so the, the, the picture, and then we're going to take you down to the tactical tools that you can use in order to be able to implement these things on a live basis. So we're going to give you the theory, then we're going to give you the tools. And we're going to do this every single week religiously to try and give you the perspective that you need in order to be able to generate wealth and be able to maintain it and protect it, but also then the tactical tools so that you can actually implement it. So that's part of a series that's going to roll out now over the coming months. Might even take a break for Christmas. So hopefully you guys will get a lot of value uh, over this. We've spent a lot of time thinking about it and putting it together, but we're also going to freestyle a little bit as well. And, uh, and as you become more aware of this week and as we get better at the technology, as well right we'll be able to answer questions as we go along so uh good to see a few of you on there already just drop in a comment if you will uh as you jump on there so i can uh, i can respond to you guys and get everything working so i'm just showing my chat now so if any of you want to just drop a little bit of chatter into uh, into the chat box, that would be awesome. And I can see whether that, that's coming through. We're actually using a different streaming method today. So just drop anything in there if you're watching. Okay, well, maybe you're all there or maybe you're not but uh, I'm gonna keep kicking on. I can see a few of you on there already, but if you are there, please just whack something in, even if it's just, g'day Andy, good to see you, or g'day Andy, not great to see you on a Monday, <laughs> either which way. So just walking back, hey, hey Jeanette, thank you so much. I can actually see these comments now, which is great. Uh, thank you for that. All right, so let's get kicking. Uh, so this is Money Monday. So Money Monday is all about giving you the strategy, giving you the overarching view, giving you the foundations and the theory behind it. Because it's important to know, you know, the why behind what you're actually doing. Because if you don't know the why, then the what does is, is less important, right? So this is about giving you the perspective. This is about giving you the understanding before we then give you the tools. Right? It's helpful to learn how to use a hammer before you're actually given it, because otherwise you're just going to start smashing stuff around. So that's what Money Monday is all about. And then we're going to back it up with uh, Thursday, where we're going to talk tools and tactics. And we're going to do all of these in bite-sized chunks in 10 minutes. That's why I've got my timer up the top here. So we're going to jump straight into it so we can make it nice and snappy. And we've got engagement, so I can see all of you here. So if you want to ask a question, throw something out into the chat, just go for it as we go along. I'm hoping that over time, as everyone gets used to these coming out, they'll become more and more interactive because this is all about you. It's all about you guys and, and making sure that you have what you need, whether it be the perspective and the understanding of the, the how and the, the why it's important, and then the actual tactical parts on how to actually use the tools. So let's jump into the first topic today. So this is our time, this is our 10 minutes getting going. So I promise you, we won't all go any longer than this. So we're gonna start right, right back at the beginning. And many of you will have seen this at some point in time before, right? So this, uh, this, is, the, this is the wheel, this is the financial wheel. And so what we're gonna do over the course of the coming weeks and months is we're gonna spin this sucker around and we're gonna basically go into every single part of this because as most of you know, this is the financial foundation, right? So this is, uh, if you can master all of these different areas, then you will be a master of your domain of finance and you will absolutely crush it, right? So what we've got here is cash flow and budgeting, right? We've got mortgage and finance, we've got superannuation, we've got investments, we've got insurance, personal and general insurance. We've got tax and accounting, we've got property, which is obviously your real estate, commercial and personal and investment. And then we've got equipment leasing and finance and mortgage broking. We've got legal wills and estates. So this can be everything from conveyancing through to business structures, through to investment structures. Uh, so these, these areas make up your financial foundation. And so we're gonna concentrate on areas of these. Like I said, and we're gonna go high level. We're gonna teach you the reason why you need to be looking at these things, right? And then we're gonna show you how to implement various different stages of it. Because this 
and I've spoken about it many different events and to, in some of our programs, but this is what I call, you know, financial symbiosis. And that's what this session here is all about. It's about some foundational understandings as to how finance actually works together, right? Because finance is an ecosystem, right? Finance is absolutely an ecosystem. If you t think about the sea anemone and the clownfish, right? So the sea anemone, for those of you who don't know, and this goes back to a time which many of you might know, is once upon a time, I almost ended up as a scuba dive instructor instead of getting back into finance after, after the investment banking days. So thank goodness I did. But uh, one of the things I loved was underwater naturalism, which is the observation of, of, of the marine life. And the clownfish, which most of us know because everyone loves Nemo, right? But one of the unique characteristics of this fish and the sea anemone is the sea anemone actually uh, stings other animals, other fish, right? And the clownfish is actually immune to the sting. So the clownfish actually gets a natural cover, right, by the habitat that is harmful to most other predators. So this provides a really, really good relationship for the, for the clownfish. And the clownfish actually feeds on the algae that sits in and around the sea anemone, which would otherwise, if the clownfish weren't there to clean it, it would actually end up destroying the sea anemone. So finance is very, very similar in concept, right? So we do have an ecosystem and an impact in one area definitely makes an impact in a whole lot of different areas. And if you guys want to throw out examples as we go through this, I'm happy to answer any of them as we do. So if you think about how this might apply to you in your personal life, whack it into the chat box and we'll, we'll go about uh, trying to help you out with it. So the way that I look at it, and this is an example I use, and some of you might have heard it before. And, and hopefully, as I'm going through this, you're all going to hear it and you're going to go, okay, this, I get it. There is something in my life right now that is going on and I need this kind of assistance. So let's just go back. Let's see how our time is going. Oh, my God, it's jumped back. Okay, malfunction. So maybe I need to figure out my timer because every time I go back to that screen, it's 10 minutes. Ago. So it's going to be constant 10-minute uh, uh, escapade. So... Obviously, that didn't work, so maybe I'll just have to look at the, the clock up the top right. So the ecosystem, you literally, any time you adjust any one of these areas, it, it impacts on the others, right? It absolutely fundamentally impacts on the others. So the, the example I give at uh, Nail It and Scale It uh, and on a lot of our presentations is that of achieving finance. Now, for business owners, this is super, super critical. But even just for, for busy professionals, or not just for busy professionals, but for business pro professionals as well, this is super, super critical, right? Because if we want, and, and more so nowadays than ever, right? More so nowadays than ever. So if we want to achieve mortgage and finance, right? So this may be the purchase of a commercial property if you're in business. It might be the purchase of an investment property personally. It may be the, person, uh, the purchase of your principal place of residence. Right now, this has a flow on effect and in business, it's magnified. Right. But if you want to achieve finance, well, the first thing that you really need to get under control is your cash flow. Right. Because more often than not, when it comes to when it comes to a property, property is a reasonably large asset. Right. So we're going to be getting a reasonable amount of finance in order to be able to do that, supposedly. So you're going to have to make sure that you have got enough within your budget in order to be able to maintain that. And as we're going to talk about in different models, you need to build in some sensitivity to that. Because if you just pin your ears back and just go like wildfire, right? Now, you may absolutely crush it. You may, right? But for a lot of people, there's little bumps that happen along the way. And if you've got your ears pinned back with absolutely no margin for risk, most of the time, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when will you get caught out, right? So, when, it look, when you look at achieving mortgage and finance, you need to be able to budget for the future. But not just this, right? We need to be able to also look at pre-budgeting before acquiring the finance, right? Because we need to show serviceability. So not we don't just need to look to the future, we need to look to the now or the short-term future right? in order to be able to make sure that we can show serviceability to achieve the loan. Right, so this may be part of your investment strategy, your growth investment strategy for the future. And here's the kicker, right? So if you're a business owner in this equation, then quite often, what is something that we can control to a degree as business owners? And as, as investors, what are we trying to minimize? Kerry Packer said it best, tax. 
because the government don't spend it wisely enough that we should be donating extra. So one of the key components of wealth creation is actually minimising your tax along the journey. The more that you keep in your pocket, right, the more that you keep in your pocket, the greater the amount that compounds. And it was Einstein who said that the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. So that's about making it for you. So the more you keep, the more you get to get, uh, or the more you compound into the future. And that generates real wealth. But here's the thing, the banks want to see good serviceability. Uh, I see, sorry, good service. They, they want to see good serviceability. And the reason why they want to see good serviceability, or sorry, what sits behind good serviceability is unfortunately paying tax because that's the measure that they effectively use, right? They use your tax returns, they use your BAS, they use all of these things in order to be able to figure out whether you have got good serviceability. So as a business owner, if you are constantly going and, and paying the least amount of tax possible, when you wanna buy the factory for the business or when you wanna buy that principal place of residence, the brokers are gonna say, no. All right, if you don't have a good serviceable income or potentially paid tax, and I know that's a dirty word because there is some times where you need to plan to pay tax. And as individuals, Perhaps if you're going to go really aggressive, you need to watch your budgeting moving forward into this area because you might need to bring down your household expenses and be able to prove that, that you're living on less and so you have more disposable income because then the more disposable income that you've got, the greater the level of serviceability. Right, so hopefully this is making sense so far. So we've already looked at how, okay, we're looking to achieve a mortgage. We realise that we have to plan for the future, which means that we've got to look to make sure that we can afford it and plan for some sensitivity about interest rates going up or down or losing jobs or bad periods of time with work. Makes sense to build some of that in. And we also need to look for the now and we need to budget between what might be now and when we decide to purchase that property in order to be able to show good serviceability. Perhaps we have to pay tax in order to be able to get the loan. And then I can show you in some you on some kind of cool little strategies in order to be able to get that back All right so so far we've, we've we've touched on one area and we've already impacted really really clearly on three so let's just say this is a principal place of residence well you may then want to start to look at the amount of insurance that you've got it might be income protection right you might want to make sure that you've got enough to cover it if something took you out of being able to work whether it be in your business or whether it be you know, in somebody else's business, you might want to make sure that your income protection is enough to support the family, but also support the payments on that. Perhaps it's if something happened which was more aggressive, a life event or a disablement event. Maybe you want to make sure that that loan could be paid off. So you want to review the amount of personal insurance that you have. And of course, if you're acquiring an asset, then you're probably going to want to protect that as well as far as general insurance, renter's insurance, all of those sorts of things. So now we've got the fifth section. Quite often younger people will put insurance into their superannuation fund, right? And the reason why they do that is because life and TPD can be tax deductible uh, in the superannuation fund, whereas personally, and I'm not giving tax advice, speak to your tax accountant, but it's not, right? So we, we might potentially look at wrapping that up in our superannuation in order to be able to make sure that we've got cash flow to pay for the loan, Right? And putting and our super can actually give us a today benefit for something in the future. I'm not saying that's exactly how you'd set it up, but may well be pretty close. So then in your super fund, you may want to make sure that you have got enough liquidity in there in order to be able to fund that insurance. All right. So you might want to have less in illiquid investments. If you've got a self-managed super fund that's all invested in property and it's heavily geared in there and it's not really generating too much income then that may not be a suitable vehicle because you may not have enough money to pay the insurance. So now you can start to see how this is really starting to affect other areas. Now, just say you wanted to buy that new Tesla. And I tell you what, oh God, I keep thinking about it. It's totally not gonna happen, but geez, it's nice to dream. No, it's not gonna happen, Andy. Come on, stick to it, stick to it. You're not gonna buy the Tesla, right? But many people might wanna buy the Tesla, right? But here's the thing. In business as well, if you start leveraging out the amount of leverage that you have, the amount of borrowing that you have, then there's only so much you're going to get based on this serviceability, remember, and that comes up here. Let me change the colour of my pen so you can see it a little bit better. Let's go for blue. It's a, it's a nicer colour, right? So 
we already know that we're up here from a cash flow perspective. Oh, you can't really see that too well. We already know up here from a cash flow perspective, but we also know down here, right, from a tax perspective. So in business, especially, you, if you want to buy equipment lease, if you want to equipment lease and finance something, so let's just say that you've got a bulldozer that you need to buy for the business, but you max yourself out on the mortgage, on the serviceability from the business side of the equation, then all of a sudden your group loan to value ratio, and we'll go through what that means later, but basically how much debt you have to how much asset you have, if that starts to blow out, then you may not be able to buy that vital bit of equipment that you need for your business. So you absolutely need to take this into consideration. And then when it comes to the legal wills, legal planning and structuring, well, of course, it's imperative to try and figure out whether you're acquiring the asset in the right structure. And here's the thing. You really, really need to be careful on this one. If you're acquiring a property, you really need to be careful about the, the, the structure that you purchase it in. And this needs to think well into the future. You need to take this symbiotic approach and you need to actually fast track that into the future and go, well, where are we going in the future? And the reason why that's so important is because the, the, there are many, many, many different people out there who spring these these sort of schemes, if you will, and these structures, and they put everybody into them. What I can promise you is that not one structure is suitable for every single person. If you ever see that, it's garbage, right? It's garbage. Your, cer your circumstance is going to dictate a different set of rules to somebody else's, and that might be because of the business. It might be because of family affairs. It might be family obligations. You know, it might be people that you have to take care of. You might be in a high-risk occupation. There are so many different things that Fact, that need to be factored into what's the right ownership structure that you really, really need to be either on it personally, know exactly where you're going in the future or have a team that really take good care of you. So the reason why I have a look at this overview to start off with and, and really get into some depth with the financial foundation is because it's so critically important to understand that this is an ecosystem. And when it comes to your advisors and business owners, yes, you know, and if you've listened to me before, I am talking to you and I'm, I'm constantly beating this into your heads. If you're, if you're a business owner and you have advisors in your business and, they are t and they're not talking with each other, then you, you've potentially got a big mess on your hand. And it's not because they're doing the wrong thing. Here's the thing. It's the, because they're not working together. And because they're not working together, they're not creating the optimum scenario for you. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to have all of the team working out of the same office. That's not what I'm saying. But these professionals need to be talking with each other in order to be able to manufacture the right outcome for you. And that's what's most so, so critically important. And here's the thing is that I think it's only starting to become common for our industry to like playing with each other. <laughs> that didn't sound right, but <laughs> it's like in, fi in finance, nobody likes to start playing the same sandpit together. But here's the thing is the best result is when you have a championship team playing together for you, right? You don't need a team of champions. We've all heard the analogy and I love the movie, The Miracle, which is, uh, an I it's about ice hockey back in the, the day of the, in the days of the Cold War and the American uh, team had never beaten had never ever beaten the, uh, the the Russian team, and this guy Herb, who is absolutely famous, Herb created a team not of professionals because the professionals went on strike, right? So he found a team of of juniors, right, who were college players, and he didn't select the best college players; he selected the best team players, and then he went. He was the first time that they ever uh, that they ever beat the Russians and won the gold medal. Like it's an incredible story. It's a true story. You should totally watch it. But that to me is another great analogy in regards to how you need to be treating your finances. Now that's totally cool. If you guys want to manage that all by yourself, well, you know, kudos to you and do the research. Make sure that you you've got the knowledge in order to be able to step this out. Make sure that you can plan it out in advance. But if you've already got advisors, get them working together and get them advising you on the future because it's up to you. Because as as it as I show you this, it's you who sits in the center, right? You sit in the center, which ultimately means it's your responsibility. And I want that to land. It's your responsibility. Your wealth journey is your responsibility. And connecting your team members and having them play together, that's that's the way to get the best result. And here's the thing. I, I even know that I've got clients these days who don't like all of the players to be playing together and involving themselves in it. 
and it just cuts your strategy off, right? It cuts some of the, I mean, we can do some incredible things, which I'm going to share with you in the tactics section throughout the coming months. We can do absolutely incredible things when we work really, really closely with mortgage brokers, especially in the investment world. Like we can, we can just, we can make fig jam. It, it, it really is quite spectacular. But it's about people working together for you in order for you to be able to achieve your journey. And it all starts here with financial symbiosis and owning your financial foundation. So make sure that whenever you make a decision that is in any of these areas, any of these areas, you at least grab this wheel back out or grab this video back out and go, well, how does it interact with all of the other areas in my life? And then as business owners, sucks for you guys, and I know what it feels like, we've got two of these wheels and they are spinning simultaneously. Right? And it's up to you to go, how is this impacting personally? How is this going to impact from a business perspective? Right? And if you start asking yourself those questions, you're going to be a hell of a lot further in front of the game. All right, so if anybody's got any questions, now's the time to put it into the, uh, into the chat. Uh, if not, I'm going to sign off in a few moments. But again, we're going to be running uh, Monday Money, which is all about the strategy. It's all about the theory. It's all about the, the high-level overview because it's super important to be able to have a good aerial view, right? I always talk about geolocation, and if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Imagine if you were stuck in the in the forest or if you were stuck somewhere in the desert and and you could rise up and get that helicopter view down you would know which direction water's at. You would know which direction safety's at. And that makes it so much easier in, in order to navigate. But if you don't zoom out, if you don't get that perspective, then the decisions that you make on the grounds are, well, they could, it's flip a coin, right? Uh, how, do you, how do you get the people in your team to play together? It's a good question, Michelle. Uh, let me see if I can actually put this up. There we go, I can. Okay, cool. Uh, liking this new tech. So uh, it's a great question, you ask, right? And one of the things that uh, I do with, uh, with with people that I work with is quite often, especially if a new client comes on board, we'll, we'll quite often preface, we'll say, look, if we, we will ask to work with the, the team players that you've got, uh, and if we find it challenging to work with them, then we will, we'll, we'll say, look, we either have to find you somebody else who's willing to play as a part of a team, or you can continue on the journey with them, right? And uh, But if for you, it's simply a matter of, uh, I'm looking at achieving these things in my life, right? So, Michelle, it might be finance, it might be investment, whatever it is, you go, I've got a journey in my life and I need to, your assistance in order to be able to get me there. But I also know that I need other people to help me along that journey. So given that, is there any way that you would be able to help me work with the other people that I'm working with in order to be able to get the right result? And if you still get a no, then you may well be in the wrong place, right? And sometimes relationships come for a reason, a season or a lifetime. You might be in one that was there for a season, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I'd be saying to them, look, I'm on a journey, this is where I want to go. In order to be able to get there, I need other people to play as a part of the game and I need you to help and play in that game with me. Are you going to come on the journey with me or are you going to work against that? And that's how I'd challenge, uh, that's how I'd position it. And then they may fire themselves. So it's a really, really good question. Uh, let me have a look at the next. So thanks, Michelle. Now I've got to figure out how to hide that message. I don't know how to hide it. You're going to stay up on the screen forever there, Michelle. Uh, all right. So if any of you have got questions, now is the time. Oh, there we go. Hide. Oh, this is quite cool. I like it. Uh, if any of you got any more questions, fire them out. Otherwise, uh, look for uh, look for Thursday. So Thursdays is all about tools and tactics. So we're going to do it again. Again, we're going to look at 10 minutes and I'm going to provide something that is a tactical tool that's going to help you understand this fi financial foundation and how this financial foundation actually works. Like what we're going to do is we're going to take you through an exercise where you can start to look into that future, get that helicopter view, start to understand what that map looks like so that you can ultimately figure out where the destination is. You can zoom out, figure out how to get there, and then you will be able to mobilize the team better. And, and here's coming back to Michelle, it's a matter of clarity around where you want to go. The greater your clarity around where you want to go, the less you will tolerate people who are not going to help you get there. 
right? And sometimes it's hard because sometimes things are fo foggy and I get that because life isn't always totally transparent. But what I'm gonna take you through on Thursday is a tool set that you can use and you can deploy in multiple different areas of your life. Finance is just one of them, but it'll zoom out so you can get the helicopter view so that you know where the map is, you know where you are, you know where the destination is, and you can start working your financial foundation in order to get there. So I uh, hope you all had a good session. I appreciate so many of you being on board today and uh, looking forward to the journey over, over time with this. My promise is, uh, you guys keep showing up. I'll keep on trying to develop more and more. I won't try. I will provide more and more value. And anybody who's got any questions, shoot them out there. I will answer all of them. Uh, so right now, I'm going to try and figure out how to turn off this live. <laughs> right? So it could be a little bit uh, challenging. But have a great Monday, everybody. Appreciate your time. Appreciate your attention. I appreciate you in general. And uh, look forward to the journey together. See you guys. Have a great Monday and a great week ahead. See you Thursday for Tools and Tactics.